right, fix our background. All right, hello and welcome everybody to the Corbs live live stream. I think this is our fourth stream going live where we are building a six figure trading business from scratch. We're starting with a small account and we are building that up uh, to where we can reasonably bring in four to that four to five hundred dollar day mark on average. As we're jumping into it this morning, we got a lot of great stuff to cover. Uh, not so much great, but this is going to be very useful. Let's go ahead and do a quick audio visual check. If you guys are in the building and you can hear my voice, let's go ahead and uh, jump in the chat. Just type in the number nine for me. Let me know. You guys can hear me. Let me know you can see me. And then we will move on. Okay. Seen some comments. I don't know if those came in before or after. So let's double check this. Let me know you guys can hear my voice and then we'll start up. Okay, okay, okay. Seeing some nines in the building. All right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who do we have? Matthew. Welcome back. Swiss Van Lam. Yep. Sebastian, Vincent, Duke, Peter, Greg. All right, everybody here. Okay, hopefully we'll have some, uh, we've got some late stragglers coming in. A few people need to keep their watch handy. Okay, but we'll go ahead and uh, let's jump right into it. All right, seeing you guys in the building, a big hello and a big welcome to everybody. We're going to jump in and uh, we're going to spend some time looking at today, what exactly shaped up, what happened. Uh, I got a real humdinger of a day for you guys. I'm almost up against the max stop loss for this trade, uh, for this account. So we're going to look at this. I'll explain everything and uh, we'll, we'll dive into what's going on here and what, what happens next from this. Now, if you guys are, uh, somebody tell me something good. Is there anybody making money today? Give me some, uh, who is earning? I know it's been, uh, this has been a tough morning for me, mostly self-inflicted. I'm really excited to tell you guys about this though, because I know this is going to help, but who, uh, tell me something good, somebody, who, who, uh, who, anybody in the green right now? Alf, Desiree, Mac, hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. As we were jumping into it, just waiting to hear something good so that we can have the motivation we need to push on and talk about my mishap this morning. Peter, my man, taking one, holding the team together. Appreciate you. See here, great day, Mac. Okay, some of you trend following people. Uh, this should be a time to really thrive for you. All right, boom, 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 boom. Let's see here, on 4X. I'll, I'll assume that that means that's green though, okay? Okay, good. We got some earners. Billy, yes, in the green. Love that. Boom, 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 boom. All right, love to hear it. Love to see you guys putting up. All right, that's what we're here for. That's what we need to be focused on as traders. When we stop earning, the market fires us and we have to go back to doing something else. Let's see here. Bought the ES at 38. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that. Okay, right in here. That's pretty much right at the low of day. Bill, it's a little suspect, a little suspect getting in right at the low there, but uh, that is a key L, that is a key HVN. I'm not sure if that's why you got it or not, but that's a good level. All right, so really good job there, really good job. Okay, all right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's talk about some stuff today. Uh, let's start off with with what we got going on in the uh, the small account challenge here. Look at what happened today and how things are shaping up. I need you all to sit down. Don't be standing up for this. You're going to fall over. But we are. Oh, uh, let's see here. Hey, Corbs, what's up, brother? I hope everybody is okay. I hope that for everybody as well. So let's look at this, guys. Uh, starting off from this small account challenge day, we got a couple trades to walk through. And what we're looking at is I'm down about 215 bucks on the morning. If you guys can uh, can see this, it looks a little small on my side. I hope you guys are up. Um, or I hope you guys can see what we're going on here. But for this small account, we're down about $215. Uh, that's not far away from the absolute max stop that I can take. Now, if you guys have been following up on this, we've gone over already the risk parameters for what we can do here. And uh, what I can, what it allows me for right now in context is about $270 as the max loss. But we've talked about this already too, that I have a very aggressive max in place. And so this cannot be a level that we hit regularly. Uh, it cannot be a level that we that we hit a lot, but it obviously is in place because we will hit it from time to time. So we got a little, I, I got a couple bullets left in the chamber, uh, only about 50, 60 bucks worth. And um, 
given how this day is shaped up, I'm not feeling that great about getting this back to break even, but we'll see what the afternoon holds. I'm going to be off the screens for a little while, uh, especially when some of those, uh, especially when some of those speakers start coming out uh, specifically at 1230. Okay. Let's see here. Seeing a little bit of blurry, seeing a little bit about a very tiny, let's do maybe this. Okay. You guys give me some feedback on if this is a uh, better setup. I can, I can zoom in on the charts somewhat when we're doing something on the depth of market, it's going to be a little difficult to see there. But let me see how you guys are doing. If you guys are having a blurry stream, I got a pretty good connection over here. Uh, let me know if that's just on my side or whatever. Okay. All right. But let's, uh, yeah, let's dive into this. I, sorry. It's like, what exactly happened? And, uh, and, and let, let's talk about what we do when, when we're just wrong. Cause I'll going to kind of skip ahead a little bit here. Looks good to you, Peter. Okay, cool. So listen, when I'm not, uh, when we're not drilled in on something, I'll put this out a little bit just so you can see me. So I'm not, you're not just listening to a screen here. Um, but what I really want to talk about once we kind of go through this, kind of our topic today is going to be when you're just wrong about something, all right? And what we're looking at here is a trade idea that I had surfaced originally. And looking back at it now, once we have a little more data under our belt, the idea was just wrong. I was off. It wasn't right. Uh, I didn't treat this right. And the, the, the market pushed me pretty much as far as I could take it. Um, and looking back, it was just a bad idea. And so we'll spend some time talking about this. And I really want to hear you guys' feedback on this because at some level, we don't need to make excuses and we don't need to, uh, uh, you know, just brush off bad things that we do. But at the end of the day, we do have to give ourselves some credit to understand that showing up every day to the markets and pulling out money consistently, uh, it's very difficult. And there's going to be some times where is, is, as much as you know, or as dialed in as you are on your system, and, and even with context of what's happening, you're going to be wrong. And th we have to have certain parameters in place so that when we are wrong, we can keep ourselves inside of something that no real damage is done. Going to max stop loss is a painful thing, but it, there's when you zoom out and you look at what you do over like a month's period, there's no damage done in that. If there is damage done in that, then you need to adjust where your risk parameters are. But where ours are set up right now, as long as we operate inside of the rules, uh, we'll, we can get through these periods where you, I just do something wrong and we can bounce back from that. And the recoup period is pretty minimal. A big issue that traders are having with, with their trading frustrations is on times where they are wrong, uh, they let it do so much damage that there's really no coming back from that. All right, so let's before we jump into that too much, let's go ahead and look at just what exactly shaped up today, and uh, why it why it got to this place and what we ended up doing. Okay, so let me zoom this out and I'll go ahead put my face on here, put my face off of here. Okay, that's better than before. Love that. Let's see here. Any strategies? With volume profile for swing trading on higher time frames, yeah, definitely. Uh, probably won't get through that today because we have a couple things I really want to drill into. But Nathan, uh, what will happen here is if we do, if we can't get to a topic, just bring it into a next one. We'll we'll try to address it in a different stream. Okay, let me get my face out of here and let's look at what happened. All right, for context here, let me just put these up. Oh, painful to watch. Let's get this drilled in. Okay, so here's kind of the our, our first couple trades of the day and kind of walk you through my thought process here of what we were shaping up. Very early on, uh, we opened up just kind of right here at the you know value area high, right at the value area high, slightly outside of it, uh, depending on if this is um, a, a micro uh, chart. We don't chart off of this. I don't really lean on these levels, but I just want to show you where the actual orders were filled at. And so what we did is immediately kind of open up here, uh, do a very, very small bit of chop. We just dropped a couple of points and then we headed in one direction. Now, the primary ideas that we were looking for today was we would open up, we would have, uh, let me actually show it to you guys in how we have it outlined. Okay. This was the primary ideas we had for the, the ES today. All right. Uh, 
open in range, slight chop and push to the downside before taking out the previous high of day and the overnight high. These were the kind of our key levels we wanted to see happen. The secondary idea is that we would open and attempt the previous high of day before feeling and exploring the previous value area. So this right here is what shaped up. If you look at the key levels and you look at what happened, it looks like this primary idea shaped up, uh, but this isn't, th that's not what actually happened, okay? What threw me off and where I was wrong today is I was looking for this idea to play out. This was a, a solid idea. And the way the market shaped up is it, it surfaced that idea early. And by doing that, it really blinded me to what was going on in the bigger, I got real zoomed into this idea and that, that idea was just wrong. What we ended up doing was not my first idea. It really wasn't my second idea. It was kind of like a third or a fourth idea where we would open and just trend. Wasn't expecting that, but that's what we got. So let's look at this because what we did is we opened up, we had this push higher to attempt the previous high of day. Uh, once we did that, we failed. We bounced around VWAP, we bounced around mid. Bulls really didn't give up anything yet, but I was looking for it to happen. So off of this mid uh, and this VWAP bounce here, we came right back up to that previous high. So we kind of peaked above the previous high, we dropped down, we came back. And during all of this bars right here, we really were holding. We were holding in. And this is a, a beautiful thing to see. Break through a level slightly, come back down, retest and hold. So that's what I was looking at. It looked like the secondary idea was shaping up. I hit the short. Now, this was very early in the morning. Um, we noticed this yesterday, the same thing today. I do not like jumping in first thing in the morning here, committing my position, we don't have enough information to really know what's going on. So during these times, we have to stay kind of responsive and, and we got to be careful. And what we did is entering in on this trade, I, uh, I basically just, this is what we talked about, but if we broke through and kept pushing higher, we wanted to be careful. You can't see this inside of the actual bars, but when we were chopping right in here, we had some real selling pressure step in. That's what made me hit the trigger. So we're looking at this key level. We had some selling pressure step in, hit the shorts. And then out of nowhere, with that selling pressure, it just got absorbed and we, we shot higher. So when that happened, uh, we don't have a lot of context. It's early in the day, took this trade off. Okay, like, listen, this level we were looking for to hold, it gave out. Something's not right about this. Let's see what happens next. Immediately after we flushed up, we came back down pretty aggressive. Okay, so we watched all this happen, didn't want to chase anything. Uh, we we're just going to let to see kind of where the next move goes. What we did, uh, we broke down VWAP, kind of flushed a little bit lower, and then we came right back up testing this previous high once again. Now, what I did is I re-entered this trade for the same exact idea. It was the same idea that surfaced. I looked at this as just kind of got chopped out, retake it. And uh, we entered this with very small size, just two contracts. We have the ability to use a lot more. At this point, it's still within the first half hour of the day. So we're getting a little bit later and looking for some failure here, or if this just keeps drifting higher, we'll look for the next thing. So the sec this idea, same exact idea, I'm taking my second attempt at it. And this happens quite often with me. Normally, I'll, I'll be in a position where I'm keeping my, my risk pretty tight. And I would rather start off with small size. And if I get the uh, confirmation that a trade's really working, then I'll look to take that even the same idea with maybe a little bit more size. Now, given where this is was, this, this trade still wasn't working yet, but it was the, what I was looking for still in line, so I took it. And we came back down, we tapped VWAP, we weren't giving anything to the, giving anything to the downside. And then uh, within this first kind of half an hour, we had a little bit of news, kind of medium tier. We weren't expecting much, but we were in in front of that. So we got a little pop, uh, didn't take out the high. We just popped up before dropping straight back down again. And what we, could, what we, what we went on to do were uh, a series of these moves to the downside that when we look back in hindsight and we can see uh, you know, a lot of data, it's obvious. But up against the hard right edge of the screen, we have to make these decisions in real time. And it's, it's very, very different, okay? And so what ends up happening here is 
and one of my strengths is um, is playing into volatile type action and uh, not predicting changes in the market, but understanding when we're having exhaustion and understanding when we're not necessarily accepting certain prices and then looking in to get in on uh, what would be like a contrarian trade or at least getting in on a support and resistance type of a trade where I'm looking to uh, go in the opposite direction of where we're headed, right? That's kind of my strength. That's what I look to do. And I'm telling y'all, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it so many times. We had these moves that were going higher and these moves down. Um, they, they were not giving back anything to the downside. You can see here, even on a very small time frame, even, even like a tick, we, weren't, we just weren't giving back anything. And it was very strange how this was moving, in my opinion. And uh, again, normally I feel like I'm good about getting right in sync with what's happening, but for whatever reason, and it doesn't matter if, if there's a legitimate reason for this or not, or if I just missed it or if it's an error, but at the end of the day, we, we would not give back one thing to the downside. Also, we are kind of in no man's land here where I don't really have some good levels to lean against um, other than what would be the initial balance high, which was right in line with the overnight high. So I kind of got stuck in limbo here. But entering into this trade, I went in with very small size. We just did two because I wanted to give this some room and I wanted to give it a little bit of room to, to kind of try to squeeze higher and get in on that failure. And all of these moves higher that we were having, uh, that that's I couldn't get out of seeing that this was just getting squeezed up. And eventually one of these big uh, or one of these selling pressure moves we had to the downside was going to give out and just take out all of these lows. I just saw this coming as a scenario extremely well. It just, it was happening. I knew it. So I was okay with letting this move, letting this move, letting this move. What we ended up doing uh, was never coming, never dropping. And then right in here, when we violated this, this um, initial balance and we broke the overnight high, this was the first time where there was some real strength that stepped in. We had an uptrend going. We weren't giving back anything to the downside, but this was a, the way I was reading this was we were just squeezing this up. But once this happened, um, we saw some real strength step in. And at that point there was no, it was kind of like the, my, my ivory glasses uh, were finally taken off. And I, it was like the first thing I could really see that the bulls have taken over and the bears are not showing up. Okay. So I, I sat in there, I gave this as, as I'll say this more wiggle room than I should have a lot more for me to go over, you know, nine points of heat per contract uh, is extreme on any size, because that's typically not what I'm really looking for to take on, on the winning side. So uh, I don't need to be doing that on my losers, but uh, wasn't necessarily just grilled in and being aggressive and doing something crazy. I was really getting suckered in this whole move up here, looking for a drop that was not coming. Okay. And that's what we're talking about, you know, right here, because we can look at this and I can analyze this and I can come up with all kinds of ideas on why I did the right thing. Actually, I can't looking back at this. It was an error. Like it, it was the market doing something that I, did not see happening again, get 30 or 40 more minutes into the session. Okay. The, the days playing out, we can obviously see what's happening, but up against the hard right edge of the screen. Um, I was completely blind to this. And this is a, a very nice thing to understand about your trading and about what some of the issues that we have as traders, um, and why we need to stay out of getting into low quality trades. The entry for this was uh, was great. I, honestly, the, the original idea I got in on this, that break of the previous high came back in, retested and, and held. It did hold for quite a little while. Um, that was beautiful. But uh, getting suckered into holding on to that, here's what happens. You're in a trade. And if you have some type of a bias of what you want to see happen, it kind of rules everything. And it's very difficult. It, it, it requires an incredible amount of willpower uh, and personal discipline to be able to just stick to contextually what's always going on and to never get blinded. Now, for me, uh, whether that was a little bit of my willpower dropping or, or what, whatever the reason was, um, I gave into it. 
And I let this, this bias that I have just not allow me to get out of this trade. Thankfully, uh, I have a very strong respect for my actual rules. What I was doing here was kind of discretionary. My actual rules are not discretionary. So we got to a certain place where regardless of what I think, regardless of what I feel, I had to take that trade off. Uh, and that's what I did. We keep pushing higher. We keep going higher. And, you know, in a very real sense, there's a, a reality where I just get sucked in all day long to letting a losing trade go. And this used to be what I would do all the time. Like I'd have an idea that I'm so sure is going to work. And then if it's not working, I can't get myself out of it. I just stay in it and I just fight it until I do so much damage that there's almost no coming back, right? And what we have to do is one, have the respect for the market to understand that we are going to be wrong. There's some times where we just, we, we know what's happening. We see it. The, the idea is shaping up. We got it. We're in the trade and it makes perfect sense. As soon as we exit the trade, we look back and say, oh yeah, that was wrong. Um, and when that happens, because it will happen, we have to make sure that we have some, some actual rules, some parameters that keep us from doing something stupid. Taking a loss, even hitting your max stop loss, that doesn't mean that that was a stupid thing to do because th these are things that we account for. These are things that we know eventually are going to happen. But when we start breaking those rules is where we do damage. And that's where we cannot come back. And that's where we really, really suffer. OK, so this was the trade that was shaping up, uh, you know, yesterday. I feel like when we came into this stream, I was really like worn down. I felt like from battle, the, the trade we took, it worked. It tried to work us over. We ended up having to get out. We got right back in because it was just going kind of crazy. And looking at that trade, it played out. It worked. It ended up being very nice, but it was like emotionally draining to go through that. This, it wasn't emotionally draining and there's really nothing to, to rehash. It was an idea that I, I stuck to and it was wrong, okay? And, uh, and, and if, if I can kind of bring one thing in and what's nice about this live stream that we're doing is you'll see this, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. We have rules that keep us in place when things are going bad, but overall, let's zoom this out. Let's look at a week, let's look at the month, okay? We'll see that we can still keep that upward trajectory even without crushing the market every single day or every single trade. Uh, and the idea that we have to do that or is one, it's very unrealistic. But even if you um, e even if that was something you could do, one nice thing you'll see as if you can zoom out a little bit and realize that the day to day, as long as you don't do anything crazy and break your risk, the day to day is not as important. When we zoom out and we look at our weeks and we look at our months, what you'll notice is without going on some kind of a crazy highlight reel where Corb never misses a trade, Corb kills every call, I'll still grow this account. Uh, and even if you look at the last one that we did, you look at the days, there was down days, there was bad trades, um, but at the but we still grow and we still keep everything uh, on the up up, okay? Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions or anything about this, because this is a, a, a really, it's an important topic and I kind of just, uh, there's trades that make me very frustrated. And when I look back at this one, it's just like, I blew it. I, I, that there's no other way to say it. So there's nothing to really, uh, you know, kind of go over my head. It's kind of like if you're playing a sport and it came down to like the last few points of the game, you can beat yourself up saying like, if I just would have done this, that would have been better. Um, we could have won, right? And then sometimes you can play a sport where it's just like you get crushed. The other team just dominated you and you were just off your game. There's no reason to sit there and just beat yourself up for over it because from time to time that's going to happen and you just need to realize it happened and move on. We'll, we'll live to fight another day, okay? Today I have a, a little bit left for uh, to keep me before max stop loss um, and I don't feel super confident about being able to get back in there and, uh, and, and bring this back to break even and even maybe some green. But we'll see what the afternoon gives us. If there's something high quality, I, I, I won't be afraid to jump in. But it uh, more than likely is, is not going to be a real uh, great second part of the day for me. Why do I say that? Why can somebody else just, well, actually, let me do this first because this will be nice. Uh, let's see here. We've got a Peter. <clears throat> Peter, yeah. Handsome looking distinguished man there. Good facial. 
I'm playing the uh, one hour, 20 day look back chart volume profile, just playing value area low to point of control since yesterday. Yeah, beautiful, awesome. I mean, these are where some of your good, high quality trade ideas come from. Taking an idea of like, okay, uh, is this valid? Is there some kind of an edge here? This is just a trade idea. So you look back, you do some chart replays, you do some forward replays in real time, and you start seeing if there's any juice to it. And if there is, you start incorporating it into the things you look to play. That's awesome though. How does the virgin point of control work? Um, it is the naked point of control, not the virgin. She's an old rascal. Uh, naked, not virgin. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm not sure if you're asking how exactly does it work. Uh, if we have a point of control that has not been tested in, a, in, the next sub, uh, in the next sessions, it's what would be called a naked point of control. All right, so if you're wondering how that kind of works, um, looking at, try to drill this in for you guys, lose my face. Okay. If you can see this point of control from yesterday, okay. It's kind of sticking out past this profile just a little bit. That is a naked point of control. We set this point of control yesterday, and then we have not tested that, uh, into this session. Okay. If that's, if that answers your question. Let's see here. Uh, Greg, how did you see that selling pressure on trade one? Uh, Greg, the way that I saw this was watching the order flow through the depth of market and uh, also paired right together with the price action. The, what happens a lot of times is we'll have uh, kind of these sharp moves. And what you can see is the way that we're moving through orders. Um, this was also the cumulative delta. It all kind of just lined up. I was watching all of this happen. But we had delta drop, and then we had uh, the the price drop down sharply, and it was just this sellers stepped in, and we were going, um, and then we just stopped, and we went the other way. It was it was, and it, this happened uh, several times. Where after kind of the probably about the third time it happened is when the dynamic changed. We stopped getting that drop in delta. We stopped getting those flushes down, and everything reversed. That's when I finally pulled the trigger and got out, and kind of, you know. Uh, broke out of that spell that I was in. Okay. Let's see here. You should trade with the trend. Hourly is very bullish. Uh, Desiree, where was that advice this morning? No, let's, let, let's talk about this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Trading with the trend. Great idea. Here's what happens. Um, there's a few different uh, styles of action that we take advantage of and that we do as traders. And if you are, let me pull this one back up just so we have this. It's very important to know where you where you do well and where you do not. Okay. The idea that you are going to do well in like a volatile choppy environment, the idea that you're going to do well in a non-trend environment where the action is very dead and slow, and the idea that you're going to do well in a trending type of environment is wrong. You cannot do well at all of those environments always. You can reach that level, but what's going to happen is following the trend, playing the chop, getting in on this slow, non-directional action, one of those you are going to do better at than the others. And this is the huge uh, negative. Th this is a big problem with a lot of the trainings that are out there in trading right now, because it's not coming from a place of realizing that just because something is good for me does not mean that it's going to work for you. Not work for you, but work into your, your aptitudes. So there are some people that have a great ability to kind of see where the market is going, zoom it out and get in on some of these larger moves. Um, some people are a lot more wired to kind of get in there, capture moves and get out. N nothing about this is better. Nothing about it is worse. But the, the key is to go through a process to figure out where you are at in this. So, for instance, trending. Yeah, we have some people in the room today that said, like, great day, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, awesome. You're probably in some kind of a trend following system. Or your um, your your uh, aptitudes might be for getting in and riding these trends out. Okay, uh, it's not mine. If I ever hit my max daily stop loss, and if I'm ever doing something and really struggling with the action, it's always going to be in some type of a directional day. And uh, wh what we're seeing today is just a perfect example of that. Okay, where the market does other stuff, it's I'm good with it. Um, following the trend. Now, here's the other thing. We get to this obvious place where, like you said, yeah, on the hourly, there's an obvious trend forming, but we need several hours worth of that data to be able to see that. 
so early up against the hard right edge of the screen that, you know, getting one or two candles doesn't constitute a trend. But once we zoom out a little bit, yes, now we can look at this and say an obvious trend is formed. And that's where I look back and say, hey, my idea was wrong today. Um, but that's a really, really great comment about, you know, following the trend today. Yeah, we got you. Um, so yeah, so let me know if there's anything else they say about that. Cause that's, that, that's a, um, I don't know if that's exactly how you intended it, but yeah, one, there's good advice with just following the trend. A lot of my best trades are not following the trend, but, um, the, the, uh, I, I don't know. It's maybe some like textbook advice. It's a good thing. Um, but more importantly, what I said about figuring out which one is better for you, because if you're trend following, yeah, get in there and take advantage of these days and be careful on the other days. For me, I'm I'm taking advantage of the other days and I have to be careful on these days. <sighs> Steve Y, thanks for being honest. It's hard to admit losses in front of others. Yeah, 100% big time. I mean, but here's kind of the deal too, right? Is uh, when we're talking about trading, I, I, I am so, like I have this very strong sense of just like humble confidence where, uh, you know, when things are going well, I know it has pretty little to do with me. It has a lot more to do with the fact that the market is being favorable for my approach and for my levels and for the way that I trade. And then when things are going kind of off, again, I know it has a lot to do with just what the market is giving us at those moments. And I've been through enough horrible trading days to understand what I was saying at the very beginning, where, listen, you keep within your risk parameters, you keep away from doing massive damage you get through bad trades, you get through bad whatever, uh, and then you take advantage when things are going well. And I've been through it enough, and I know at the end of the day that uh, I'm an earner, and regardless of what happens on any given day, uh, I'm going to live to fight another day, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back in there. Do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, it's never fun to admit losses, but I'm, I'm very much, I make, I make my peace with taking losses because um, they happen, you know, maybe quite a bit. Let's see here. Your synopsis of that trade is extremely valuable. Uh, valuable synopsis. It's just a fun word to say. Synopsis. I mean, whoever whoever named synopsis should be in charge of naming more stuff. Thank you for the in-depth evaluation. Very useful to see how you can go wrong but not do any long-term damage. That's the comment of the stream right there. Do being wrong without doing any damage. There's a, you take a, a loss or even a max loss that's inside of your risk parameters. No damage has been done. You come back from that extremely easy. You buckle in, throw your rules out the window and let one wrong idea crush you. The damage has been done. Let's see here. We learn from our trading mistakes and try to minimize them in the future Corbs. 100%, 100%. MACD hourly, very bullish this morning. Yeah, again, Desiree, awesome comment. Into the idea that the MACD is a trend following indicator. So it should have done well today. If it didn't, you'd have some real issues because uh, it's a trend following indicator. And obviously, yeah, there was a trend day. But again, you'll see those strong signals on the MACD when we're being volatile and there'll be false signals, right? And um but yeah, if you were following the MACD and that's your thing, then you should have crushed today. Uh, do you trade in a community driven or alone? Do you trade in a community driven or alone? Uh, yeah, I think I got you. We, uh, I trade live every single day inside of TradeAct. We do a screen share similar to this. Uh, I mean, you see the positions I enter and, and everything. We do our prep. Uh, we do all of that. That's right. So to answer your question, yes. <sighs> Agreed. Some of us are contrarian faders. Some of us are trends, et cetera. There's no one way. Uh, and certainly the MACD is not the only indicator out there. Yeah, 100%. But, you know, this is kind of what happens in like the marketing side of what we do here in trading is somebody will have like a MACD or a trend following system and they'll kind of cherry pick out a day like this and be like, oh, look how beautiful this signals work. It's like, yeah, okay. Um, and we can cherry pick out anything and and find a situation where it works. But uh, what about all the, you know, we, we have to be able to adjust for what the market's actually giving us day to day and do something with that. So 
Uh, everything works at some point. Uh, everything doesn't work. We got to find what really works for us. There's several good things out there. And uh, there's no one way. It's certainly, yeah, yeah. Certainly, MACD is not the only one there. Okay, yeah. Uh, Julio, do you trade off of five minutes or 15 minute chart? Um, I don't use a five minute. The one we're looking at right now is a trigger chart, very zoomed in. It's a, a six tick range bars. And then um, I use a 15 minute is the, the more zoomed out one we were just looking at a little while ago. That's a 15 minute. Okay. Let's see. I am not the guy to give advice, but regardless, the training plan should not change the plan or just quit for the day if the market does not give it your way. I am not the guy to give advice, but regardless, the trade plan should not change the plan. The trade plan should not change the plan. Glitch, glitch. Or just quit for the day if the market is not going your way. Yes. I think I'm in line with what you're saying here. Uh, we got our plan. We got the thing we're looking to do. If it's working, we do it. If it doesn't work, we just have the ability to stop. Uh, it's tough. It's like it's so easy to say. It's the hardest thing in the world to do, but we got to do it. Let's see here. Pat, uh, Peter, good comment here. So listen. Looks like right now everybody is going long, but the, the tick is showing that it's dropping us off of a cliff, okay? This is nice to kind of, uh, we need some parameters when you're thinking about making trade decisions here, just in, in the sense of this. Today's a good example of where I got off on base on this, but um, where we can see things that are forming or that should happen or that look like they're happening, but at the end of the day, the market is going to do what it's going to do. Can the the uh, the uh, NYSE tick, you know, information that we're seeing there, can that still turn negative and the price just keep ramping up? A hundred percent, that can happen. Is it likely? No, but it could happen. So what's nice is to be able to have some type of a criteria where you can see these ideas forming, but then wait for some type of an actual confirmation. Right? Wait for the trend to actually break. Um, wait for VWAP to get taken out and hold below something because, uh, and I, I, this is my struggle is when I want to see something happen, I will find so many reasons to back it up And nine out of 10 times. It's probably right. But every once in a while, uh, you know, the tick will be dropping, but price will just go through the roof and, uh, that, that, you know, whatever, if the market does that, we just can't let it do too much damage to us and, or we can't let it do anything outside of what we've planned for because it will happen. Matthew, how many points leeway in a trade do you suggest? Is there a particular setup or action to look for a certain time? Is there a particular setup or action to look for at a certain type of day? What would be some good rules? Want to take some action, but nothing rash. All right. There's a few different questions there. I was kind of reading that as one, so it confused me. Um, let's see here. Matthew, how many points leeway in a trade do you suggest? Okay. Uh, a heck of a lot less on what I did on this last one. So this might sound a little hypocritical, but um, you know, yeah, here's the deal. When you're entering into a trade, you need a reason to enter. And the, where you want to put your stop is when that idea is no longer valid. Does that make sense? Like if you're in a trade, uh, there comes a point where the trade didn't work. And if the trade's not working, then you just need to get out. But if the trade still has the option to work, uh, and if the trade is still doing its thing, and you, you're getting out, well, then you're keeping things too tight. And so 100%, there's not this um, uh, cookie cutter answer for that. And this will change as the market conditions are changing. So right now, it's a little bit wider than it would typically be on the ES. Um, uh, you know, if you're, if you're doing anything within like four points or so, you're keeping your stops very tight right now. Okay. Um, and if you're letting it go like eight or nine points, that's going to be pretty wide. Uh, that changes from time to time, but kind of like right now, that's what we're facing. So if you, even if you have a really high quality setup, you got to plan on just giving it a little bit of room right now. I like to just, you know, get a trade. If it's working out, take it. Um, if it goes more than like a couple points against me, something's wrong, get out, try again. But, um, you know, right now you need to adjust a little bit there. So yeah, how many points of leeway do you suggest? That's kind of, you know, right now that would be some good advice for a product like the ES, but obviously that doesn't translate to everything. So uh, it's kind of tough right there. Let me see here. 
is there a particular setup or action to look for at a certain time of day? Really, really, really great question, okay? Uh, one of the reasons why a lot of people say to sit on your hands during the first 15 or 30 minutes of the day um, is because during this first part of the morning, the market is in just price discovery mode. Okay, so we're, we're having kind of an open auction typically. Today, we just took off and drove. But normally, we're, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're testing out both sides, kind of seeing where the interest is. We have orders that are, you know, just being filled. We have people that are anchoring in their positions for the day. Um, we got a lot of people sitting on the sidelines waiting to see how things are shaping up before they get committed. And so what normally happens, and if you're sitting there trading the first half hour of the day especially, you definitely need to plan on not getting too overcommitted and taking profits as they show up. What do we mean by that? Well, today we opened and just took off. If you got in early and just held, that was the move. But go back and look at the last, you know, 60 days. We did it on Friday, okay? Uh, not helping my point, but to say this, this is more of the, uh, this is not the most likely thing to happen. For us to open and just take off and go one direction on a product like the ES is fairly rare in terms of it's much more likely that we're going to do something else. And so when you are getting in trades and you're in that first part of the morning, you should really expect that we're going to be having some chop or some back and forth or the likelihood that a trade is going to be working out nicely and then maybe drop very hard and then return working out nicely it gets elevated. Like you almost have to expect some of that action. Okay. So it's, it's going to be um, a more difficult trade to get in, in the first part of the morning and, and hold it through to completion. But it, it provides some very nice opportunities. If you're quick, where you can get in at good levels, get in for good ideas, let it go up, take your profit and get out. Some of the trades you want to get involved with are going to be trades that you want to hold. And then there's, there's other trades where they're not meant to hold. You want to get in, you want to get out, you want to just take your money. If you are, if we have a nice strong trend being established and you are in early, you don't want to take that trade off. You want to let it ride. That is a trade to hold, right? Bill, you're in at 38. It's a trade to hold. Uh, but then there's a lot of other times where the quality of that trade is not there. You need to just get in and get out. When you're, when you get to profit, when you get to your target, don't try to give it more room, just take it off and be done. And so in the first part of the morning, you're typically going to have more of those trades where you need to kind of get in and get out or at least get in, secure some profit. All right. That's, that's really important. Once we get past 1130, we start reaching 12, especially like 12 to 130. Uh, it's, it's a really good time to have some type of, um, not a change in direction, but some type of a pullback or some type of a correction it happens a lot, you know, kind of past 1130 to 130 some type of a deep pullback, uh, some type of a correctional, you know, something very, very common. Uh, and then is, as far as another, maybe kind of highlighted time, um, once the bond market closes at two 30, it's another very nice time to come back to the screens. So if you're talking about when to trade, when not, we're talking about the ES right now in the morning till about 1130 from 12 to one 30, good time to stay off the screens after two till the close. It's another good time to be back on the screens. All right. Some, and if you had the, uh, if, if you could drill in and track your progress, and if you looked at the times of the day where most of your losses came for most traders, it's going to be during that first half of an hour. And then after like 12 o'clock, that's where most of your losses come. And that it's specific reason. These actions are, are pretty tough to trade. And if you just kind of sat on your hands during those times, you would typically do a lot better. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you're looking to take action, but you don't want to do anything too rash, you're not too comfortable with day trading the, the, uh, something like the ES right now, first 15 to 30 minutes of the day, be really careful. Just let some stuff shape up. Don't be too quick to pull the trigger on that. Once we get into the afternoon, be very careful. Uh, and then, you know, you can look to come back in, in the afternoon. I think that's probably answered that question. That's really good. Lost is the cost of the business you are running. Lost is the cost. Yeah. Don't make that the mantra. Sorry. <laughs> Let's not repeat that, but yeah. What is the percent? Uh, what is the percent probability of the volume profile strategy, uh, Desiree? Okay, one thing we need to do is really when we're looking at the volume profile, this is not a buy here, sell here system. It gives us information, and off of that, we build some really high quality trades. 
So it's not like uh, this is a crossover strategy where every time this line crosses this line, we're supposed to be getting in or something. So you can't quantify what is the percentage profitable of the volume profile strategy. A trade we took yesterday called uh, the naked tractor beam, that's a very high percentage uh, probability of playing out that one of those trades we took yesterday, most of them aren't that high percentage. So it's, um, it's not a question that can be answered in the way that you're asking it. Okay. But um, the, the, uh, the importance of the information the profile gives us is incredible. All right. Even if we were to, let's just kind of drill in and look at this today. If you guys can see where we're at here, uh, this morning we had this HVN at the 3039. We opened right on top of it. We kind of chopped around it. And then the next LVN we had was below us at this 33 and then above us at this 6950. What we did is we literally held this level and we just chopped all the way up to tagging it almost to the tick. Flushed through it, failed behind it, you know, very immediately. Uh, and then we spent the majority of the time kind of here. It's getting to a portion of the day where it's getting very messy. Sorry, I thought I lost audio. Um, and on this higher time frame, it's probably not as easy to kind of see what we're really doing to respect this level. But especially on this first attempt up, kind of coming right to it, stalling off, pushing through it and failing down. Uh, and then, you know, the grind higher is just relentless on that way up. But as far as, uh, as far, that's probably like the closest we can get or as far as I, I can explain of like, you know, what's the importance here. Okay, let's hear what, uh, what, will it going to take to be your best student? Uh, just a little pillowcase full of money and a childlike sense of adventure. Let's see here. Exactly. Thrift. Yep. Do you uh, already experience footprint chart and reject it? Various tape consolidators and reject them? Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if we're talking about tape following tools, um, it's tough because there's a lot of information out there that's very valid, but it's only valid if you can do something with it. Uh, and I'm telling you, what ends up happening, especially a lot with order flow and even with volume profile, is it gives us information on certain mediums. And if you don't really know what exactly it is that you're doing with that, it just becomes very noisy and it creates a lot of confusion and a lot of errors. And so I, I've definitely tried a lot of different things. I've tried the footprint. The probably the the closest thing to being something that I really would want to use would be Bookmap. It's a very nice product. I, I would you know if you're looking for something like that, it, I think it's very nice. But um, yeah, I've definitely tried footprint in the the past. I haven't been a fan of it. I uh, it, it kind of just gets confusing for me. I don't really like that at all. Okay. Da, 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 da. Guys, what happened? It is 1249. It has been 50 minutes. I don't know what happens with you guys. I sit on the chart sometimes and the time drags on. I fire up this live stream and two seconds later, it's been an hour. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to shut this down in about 10 minutes, guys. So if you have something to get in, get it in. And uh, I had another thing I wanted to talk about. I'm going to save it for you know the next session, I guess. So let's see what needs to be talked about today. We'll straighten anything out that needs to be. And uh, I'm going to have to say goodbye to you guys. I love you all a long time, but let's get through some of these, okay? Let's see here. Some of your outline is better than synopsis. Yeah, you got that right. You use the you use a tick chart? No, it is a range chart. This uh, confuses quite a few people, but just this right here, this trigger chart, it's set to ticks in size, but it is a range bar chart. Okay, so the way that looks is uh, it, it's, it's set to, well, actually, here, let me just show you real quick. It's set to range bar, standard in ticks, uh, and then it's set to six right now. Okay, if you guys can see that, I know sometimes the smaller letters are hard to see, but uh, yeah, it, I, I say tick because it's set to six tick, but it's range bar. It's very different. Okay. Uh, will it be helpful if I use market profile with pivot points? Yeah, listen, I would use volume profile, not market profile, but um, yeah, if you want to also compare that to pivot. Uh, your pivot points as key levels, you'll probably find that they're going to match up a lot. But um, both of those are going to give you some very nice, very nice things. I got nothing wrong with pivot points. Pivot points are very, very nice way to view the market as well. 
ba, 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 ba. yes okay the nyc just keeps me out of trouble going long based on the verb. i wait and see instead of getting long only way i use it etc yeah beautiful it's what we were just talking about right okay you got it you got it uh just with a challenge like this not of room to screw up so entries must be dead on yeah matthew listen with a challenge like this not a lot of room to screw up so entries must be dead on uh you're not wrong okay and one of the things that we can do is uh you know really use our position sizing well as well okay because we we have the ability to go a little more aggressive um even on these trades that we let kind of get out of control they went very far against us but we use small size so we're still not even to max stop loss you know so we can really position accordingly there and know what times to be more careful you know all those things we talked about that can help you decide what to do with that sitting on the short fade on the es uh, i've been conditioned after the short squeezed over the last few weeks yeah, the time of day we're in, it's a very nice time to look for a short, especially, you know, kind of feeling at that LVN. I love it, but uh, I just wouldn't overstay your welcome. I would expect at some point we reach a higher high. We do have speakers speaking, though, so maybe that happens. But boom, boom, lunchtime chop. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, suspecting an attempt to return to the daily VWAP. Yep, I would agree with you as well. And I'll be looking to, I basically got like one more trade. I got one more bullet in the barrel here. I'm going to be looking to, if we can get down in there, that's where I'll be looking to get uh, get long as well. For VWAP, what period do you use daily? Okay, so when looking at VWAP like this, uh, this is set to reset every day. And on the current profile that's being built out, the VWAP plots right along with that. Tomorrow it resets, but these are all happening intraday. Okay. Let's hear one minute MACD around 11 a.m. is very helpful for a quick trade. Awesome. I love that. Keep some rules around that. Make it a high quality setup for yourself. It's beautiful. Uh, what was your criteria for failing trade plan today? Um, what was my criteria? What was your criteria for a failing trade plan today? Uh, yeah, it was once we broke through that initial balance high, it was the first time where things stopped looking negative, not in price action. I just mean with the flow and even with the Delta, uh, everything went from this looks like we might just be squeezing everybody out to where, okay, I'm actually just incredibly wrong about this. One minute MACD. What's happening here? I feel like that was that the same thing. Trade, uh, the tractor beam didn't work today. Listen, I think I talked about this in a little bit uh, in the beginning as well. This was tough because depending on even what profile you were using, you'll notice either we opened up very slightly inside of that value area or we opened up um, like right at the high of it. Okay, so uh, maybe on a, a little bit more zoomed out, it's close, but it was right there with opening up outside of value or opening up inside of value, kind of like right at that trigger mark. It's kind of like the equivalent of, um, you know, looking for like a doji and you can classify it kind of as a doji, but maybe that one's not a doji. And that was really what we were setting up for that today. How do you interpret high volume nodes near value area highs versus value area lows? Or what if this is mixed in different time frames? How do you interpret high volume nodes near the value area high? versus value area lows. And what if this is mixed in different time frames? Okay, uh, I'm not fully understanding the question there of, of what exactly to do with that. Um, if uh, I'll pretty much treat high and low volume areas uh, virtually the same. If I'm looking for like a, like a value area low, we're approaching, let's say on the intraday and on a higher time frame, that's an LVN. That would be beautiful. I'd love that. If anything, that'd make me feel stronger about you know getting in there. If, if that's what the situation was. Mm, a little hard for me to address that question, though, okay? Corbs, uh, I thought using volume profile with Sierra will definitely identify a good entries and exits. Yes, 100%. When learning about market profile, I noticed the volume profile strategy is kind of similar, except the market profile is more based on how long the price stays at one level. Yeah, that's the only difference. One's based more on time. The other one's based on true volume. If you understand why, um, the reason that we had market profile, which came first, was we did not have the capabilities to get the tick data and see what's happening at every level. So we had this time-based tool. The volume profile is, in my opinion, the evolution of that. 
Uh, and so it's no longer focusing on time, but it's really granular to what's happening. It's much more refined. In my opinion, it's much better. And uh, market profile has been used for years. There's an edge there. If you got it, use it. I have nothing bad to say about it. If you're just starting to learn, in my opinion, you should be focusing on volume profile, not market. Yep, Tractor Beam, we think we've already covered that one kind of right there, okay? You should write a book about volume profile and use it to create a course. Uh, I've come across zillions with a Z of VPR, but no one has nailed it like you. I think you, I think you, think you, think you. Okay, uh, book map sounds interesting. Da, 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 da. What VWAP period do you use for the, the, what VWAP period do you use for the time period? Okay, daily, so I think I've already answered that. Book map is expensive. Book map is expensive as you have not paid uh, as you have to pay for the data feed. Yeah, Bookmark is not a cheap tool, but you know a servant's worth is higher. If it helps you execute some good trades, spend the money, invest in your business. If it, if it does it for you, it kind of got confusing for me, so I didn't really use it. Three minutes to go, everybody. Uh, let's see here. Your micro volume profile is from June 10th. Is that on the right side of your screen? Why don't the high volume and low volume uh, areas match? what is on the screen. Okay, this, yeah, beautiful. Let's, let me answer this because this will be a nice point where I don't want there to be any confusion here. Uh, Greg, you are a member of Trade Act, so you have access to this in part five. Uh, you're not there yet, but it will, I'll go over it briefly here, but this will be all explained in very nice detail for you. When it comes to drawing profiles, we have what is called a uh, we can have a volume profile, which is like a daily profile, or we can have a composite. A composite is where you bring in more than one day worth of data. So if I was to take and draw a profile uh, around, you know, let's say this full day to this day and bring in both of those days combined, that would make a composite profile. All right. So we can look at our intraday profiles and see what's happening. And then we can draw a lot of the uh, a lot of value from the actual composite profile of what's really going on on higher time frames. So what I'll do at any given time is I'll always have the daily profiles going. And then I usually have two forms of composite profiles. The first one, which I'll always have is the very zoomed out picture. And this is going back literally like a few years worth of data. This is very zoomed out. And most of this is pretty unimportant because we only need to drill in kind of with what we're looking at you know, day to day. So these are where, you know, those day to day levels are going to become very important. That's why I have those ones marked off. So when you look at this chart and you say uh, that this is, you know, an LVN or an HVN or this one right here, let's say this 3325 says LVN. If I move that a little bit, that's not an LVN. Well, it's not an LVN on this profile, but it's, it's on the higher time frame. Okay. So typically what will happen is I'm using this higher time frame to get all of my really key levels from. And then from time to time, the market goes through a certain period like this, where we gap down very large. And then we spend a few days here. We kind of spend several days here in balance. And then we work our way down. But once we gapped down, we were somewhat in no man's land here. And this, all of these days, we're still kind of holding right within all of that range. So I'll, uh, I, and I, I started off just kind of this composite profile that you see here. This started off just with these two days. And then I, I brought in that third day. And then as this balance just kind of kept on, I just kept extending it out and we're still holding the same area. So I'm building the, uh, you know, that other composite. So we have the one very large composite. And then as the days today will give us kind of like, smaller time frame balanced, I want to bring those in as well because that that's helpful to me and it helps me see what's really going on there. But um that's where the that's where don't be confused. Okay. The 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 things that are marked are coming from a much higher time frame. And then as soon as we break out of this area of balance that we're in, you know, kind of since that June 10th, as soon as we break out of that, this composite here, I'll delete it. And uh when we establish a new area, I'll draw I'll redraw it in a new area. These ones come and go. These ones happen every day. And then those the, that higher time frame stays always. Okay, really good question. Hope that helps. All right. A 
Okay, let's see. There's a few more questions, comments that come in here. We are just after one o'clock. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this one up, guys, and we'll we'll just cap it off for today. It is one o'clock. Today is Tuesday, um, and yeah, that'll be it. Listen, it was really great hanging out with you guys. I uh, I really enjoy this time, even coming in like on a negative day. Um, I still I really look forward to connecting with you guys, answering questions, and uh, being a part of this stream. I really hope we're getting some value out of this, and um, I, I really hope we can see it, some stuff not to do, some things to do, and, and we can use this stream to just improve on different qualities in our trading, uh, different ways that we look and we think about things. And if you got you know questions or anything like that, that uh, I can help speak into and maybe steer in the right direction, I love to do it as well. And uh, it's just a great time to hang out with you guys. So I hope you guys keep enjoying this. I hope you keep showing up. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow for the uh, redemption um, uh, of what happened today. Okay, we're going in with a pretty big hole today, almost at max daily stop loss. We're looking to turn some of this around and uh, we'll, we'll just see what happens, okay? So I don't have much more to leave you guys with for today, but it was always good to see you all. Uh, make sure you say goodbye on your way out. Thanks, guys. Uh, those of you who say goodbye, I kind of see that coming in. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, so, okay, just seeing some of these. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lesson learned. Yeah, yeah, 100% um, some of those comments are coming in there. So really great. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Let's all hit the like button on the way out. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning. Come back right at 12. We'll jump on, see what happens tomorrow, what the market gives us. And if you want to connect a little bit more, there'll be a link in there for our Facebook group, uh, not for Trade Act, but for you know, kind of this trading community. If you want to connect over there, feel free to join. It's free. And we try to filter out stuff there to make it um, you know, where it doesn't get to be toxic. I know a lot of times bigger environments can, can get pretty nasty. So we try to filter that out. So if you guys want a safe place, feel free to, to link up over there and you can reach out to me for anything. And we will be back here tomorrow. I miss you guys all equally. Be well, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.